For centuries, science has studied Mars, the planet where life may exist. The Red Planet was portrayed as a site of romance and danger, where heroes encountered strange species or Martians that were more human-like, as seen through the rose-colored lens of science fiction sagas like the 1951 film Flight to Mars. Meanwhile, real-world scientists were eager to find out if Mars may be a safe sanctuary for extraterrestrial life. The Soviet Union was one of the pioneering countries in space research during its early stages. In order to investigate the mysteries of our solar system and beyond, they launched a number of space probes. What was discovered on Mars by the Soviet spacecraft? Without further ado, let's find out. For a very long time, the majority of scientists held the view that Mars was the most likely location for any planet that might support life within our solar system. The justification was that Venus was far too hot, with a surface temperature of 900 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 400 Celsius, and an atmosphere containing sulfuric and hydrochloric acid. Yeah, there won't be any life there, or at least not any life like what we're familiar with. On the other hand, we were aware that water on Mars alternated between a gaseous and solid state. Thus, since water was necessary for life, we concentrated on Mars. Several space probes were launched by the Soviet Union for Mars. On November 1, 1962, Mars 1 was the first spacecraft to be launched, and it was the first artificial object to pass by Mars. It was unable to make contact with Earth and couldn't send any data back. The first manned missions to successfully land on Mars were Mars 2 and Mars 3, both of which were launched in 1971. On November 27, 1971, Mars 2, the first artificial object to touch down on Mars, made history. Nevertheless, it crashed soon after landing, destroying the lander. It's hard to sugarcoat the fact that 1971 was a terrible year for the Soviet Mars program. One of the four robotic spacecraft the USSR launched towards Mars that year never left Earth's orbit. Two were thwarted by Martian dust storms, and a third slammed head-on into the Red Planet. Yet the Mars 3 lander had more success, somewhat. Mars 3 became the first spacecraft to safely complete a soft landing on another planet more than 51 years ago on December 2, 1971, using a complex landing technology that was unsurpassed until later NASA missions like Pathfinder and Spirit. It unfurled its fluorescent shell, activated its television cameras, and then soon perished. But Mars 3 was intended to accomplish more. Mars 3 was a groundbreaking mission that, despite being unsuccessful, will always be marked with a red asterisk on NASA's Viking missions. What the Mars 3 legacy would have been if the lander had remained intact is difficult to imagine. It was equipped with gamma-ray detectors, X-ray spectrometers, and mass spectrometers. Even though its range would have been constrained by a tether connecting it to the Mars 3 lander, it carried the Prop-M rover, which would have been the first powered vehicle to travel across the surface of another planet. The rover would have had a simple obstacle avoidance system as well as novel skids for mobility. The legacy of Mars 3 could thus be best described as a lesson in perseverance and a reminder that even within the covert Soviet space program, there were people of great intelligence and imagination at work. A hellish landscape of extreme heat and pressure is the surface of Venus, where the Soviets successfully landed probes. There, they survived longer than Mars 3 did on the icy surface of Mars. For the Soviets and the later Russian space program, success with trips to the Red Planet remained a big question mark. The Soviet Mars program went on despite these losses, and numerous more spacecraft were dispatched to Mars in the years that followed. Mars 4 was launched in 1973, and was intended to orbit Mars and map its atmosphere and surface. But instead of entering orbit, it sailed right by Mars. The first Soviet spacecraft to orbit Mars successfully was Mars 5, which was launched in 1973. It ran for 22 days and transmitted useful information about the temperature, surface characteristics and atmosphere of the planet. The equipment on board the spacecraft also picked up water vapor and carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere, which revealed important details on the geology and climate of the planet. 
The Mars 6 mission, which was also launched in 1973, was intended to visit Mars and explore its surface. On March 12, 1974, it made a successful landing on Mars to become the second spacecraft to do so. The lander was equipped with several scientific tools, including a mass spectrometer and a soil analyzer for studying the soil and atmosphere of Mars. The Mars 6 mission's discovery of organic compounds on Mars was contentious and the subject of much discussion. What do you think calls that? Because it presented the potential that life may have lived on Mars at some point in its history, the Mars 6 mission's discovery of organic compounds on the planet calls controversy. The fundamental components of life as we know it are carbon and hydrogen atoms, which are found in organic molecules. It was a momentous discovery to find organic compounds on Mars since it revealed that the planet may have had the conditions for life to have arisen. However, the Mars 6 mission's identification of organic compounds on Mars was debatable for a number of reasons. One explanation for this is that the mission's equipment was not created especially to look for organic compounds. A number of scientific tools, such as a gas chromograph and a mass spectrometer, were included in the Mars 6 lander's arsenal. These tools were used to determine the makeup of the Martian atmosphere and surface. Although these types of equipment could find organic molecules, they were not designed for this. The notion that the molecules were not of biological origin added to the dispute surrounding the discovery of organic compounds on Mars. Both non-biological and biological processes can result in the formation of organic molecules. For instance, the chemical interactions between minerals and gases in the Martian environment can create organic molecules. Instead of being a sign of past or present life on Mars, the organic compounds discovered by the Mars 6 mission could have arisen through non-biological processes. However, the scientific community did not instantly embrace the Mars 6 mission's findings. It took lengthy testing and verification to confirm the crucial assertion that organic compounds had been found on Mars. To validate the outcomes of the Mars 6 mission, scientists carried out additional research and experiments. The scientific community didn't fully embrace the findings for some years, and some experts were still dubious about the assertion. A Mars landing was also planned for the 1973 Mars 7 mission. It didn't hit its mark, though, and passed by the planet. The Soviet Union's Mars program was extremely covert, and the specifics of the missions were not made public for many years. You might be wondering why it was kept secret in that way. Well, the political climate of the Cold War was one of the main causes of the secrecy surrounding the Soviet Mars program. Both the Soviet Union and the United States were keen to prove their dominance to the rest of the world in this competitive technology race. The Soviet Union's Mars program was viewed as a way to highlight its technological might and illustrate that socialism is superior to capitalism. As a result, the public was not informed of the mission's specifics, and the program served as a propaganda tool. Strategic considerations also played a role in the Soviet Mars program secrecy. The Soviet Union did not want to divulge any critical material that may be used against it, since it was aware that Western intelligence agencies were closely monitoring its space program. The Soviet Mars missions utilized cutting-edge technologies, such as landing modules, spaceship propulsion systems, and research instrumentation with potential military uses. The specifics of the mission were kept a secret by the Soviet Union since it did not want to expose these technologies to its adversaries. Once the Soviet Union's Mars program came to an end in the late 1970s, no more missions were dispatched by the Soviet Union to Mars. Nonetheless, scientists are still looking at the data the spacecraft collected today, and they are continually making new discoveries using this data. There have been a number of additional missions that have investigated Mars and made important discoveries in addition to the Soviet Mars mission. The Mars Exploration Rover mission, which NASA launched in 2003, has collected a wealth of information about the planet's geology and minerals. As a result of the mission's discovery of historical water activity on Mars, it is possible that the planets formally supported the existence of life. Launched by NASA in 2005, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter mission has also made important discoveries. 
The orbiter has discovered a lake beneath Mars's southern polar ice cap, among other areas where liquid water seems to be present on the planet's surface. Although Mars missions may appear to be regular at this point, very few ships actually reach the planet's surface unharmed. When their lander, Schiaparelli, broke apart on the Red Planet in 2016, the European Space Agency, ESA, suffered a devastating example of that. But NASA has already been successful in sending four robotic vehicles to Mars. Moreover, history was once more created when the fifth rover, named Perseverance, touched down on Mars on February 18, 2021. Yet it will be some time before humans set foot on Mars. For the time being, robots must perform the labor, and Perseverance has a lot of it in store. It was sent to investigate whether the Jezero crater, which was once submerged in water, had ever been inhabited. The rover will also look for biosignatures or traces of past life at the same time. For this reason, it is furnished with a range of measuring tools. Its third task is to demonstrate technology in order to open up space for human missions. The tiny amount of oxygen already present in the Martian atmosphere will be extracted by a device called MOXIE. Since oxygen may be utilized to create fuel in addition to being necessary for breathing, this technology would be essential for human missions. Also, Perseverance will gather up to 30 soil samples, put them in separate containers, seal the containers, and eventually dump them in a suitable area so that a subsequent mission can collect the samples and return them to Earth. It doesn't get much better for scientists than this. Receiving pristine samples from Mars and being able to examine them here using the most up-to-date methods. According to NASA, these samples may be able to shed further light on the causes and origins of life in our solar system. These missions have offered insightful information on Mars's geology, atmosphere and possibilities for life. Many discoveries have also been made on Venus and other adjacent planets, in addition to Mars. Venus has a mostly carbon dioxide atmosphere and its surface is hot enough to melt lead, according to research from NASA's Pioneer Venus mission in 1978. The first color images of the surface of Venus were taken in 1989 by the Soviet Union's Venera 13 mission, which had landed there. More recently, the Venus Express mission of the European Space Agency, which was launched in 2005, gathered information on the planet's atmosphere, temperature and surface composition. It also found signs of active volcanism on Venus. The Soviet Mars program was, all things considered, one of the most audacious space exploration initiatives at the time. A new generation of scientists and engineers was motivated to investigate the mysteries of our solar system and beyond by the Soviet Mars program, which also prepared the way for future expeditions to the Red Planet. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.